Sammy. Hello, hello, you guys hear me? Anybody here? We switched over to YouTube because the sound is way better, and I figured since it's a uh, recording class, we might as well have some good sound. Typing in uh, DMing people to come to the YouTube class. We're going to get started soon, all right? Can you guys hear me all right? If you can, just uh, type in the chat thing there. So while we're waiting for people to come in, um, can you guys just... Uh, let me know what your um, experience is with uh, recording drums, what type of um, DAW guys you use, digi digital audio. Jared, you can't hear me? How about now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me, Jared? Just... Uh, Reminding everybody on here, because the Zoom was really bad. Just wait until we get everybody in here. All right. I'm just going to throw a little bit of uh, test runs here for you guys. So first, I want you guys to let me know if you can see uh, my Logic page. I'm going to throw it up. Can you guys see the Logic capture right now? There's some delay, so it might take a while for the Logic screen to come up. You guys see it now? Sorry, guys, just got to cover one more person. We got everybody. All right. Okay. We got it. All right. I think that's everybody. Oh, sorry, Jared. Okay, cool. We're at 10 people, so uh, why don't we just get started? Okay, so this class is uh, specifically more right now geared towards beginners, and I really just want to show you guys how to um, link up microphones to an interface 
and then into uh, your computer. And then I want to show you guys how to bounce it out and send to your friends. You know, everybody's doing remote recording these days, so I'm going to show you guys the quickest and easiest way to do that. Sound good? So first thing I'm going to start off with is just literally just plugging in your uh, your microphones. So let's see here. Yeah. So I'm going to show you guys. So when you're plugging in the microphone, right? This is the male side. You're plugging this into literally this. Oh, my iPhone's not coming up. Dang it. All right, here we go. You're plugging into this right here. This is input one. Oh, it's upside down, but right. I then need to take this right here and plug it right in. And so once you plug that in, what you want to do is you want to go into Logic. I'm going to start a new track here, which you do right here. And since I plugged it into number one on my interface, I'm going to put input one here, right?
Hello. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, sorry, guys. All right. We back on. You guys hear me again? We good, guys? I know it's delayed. All right, cool. So what I'm using here for my... Uh, for my uh, drum mic setup is a Focusrite Claret 8 Pre. And you see that it has the first two inputs in the front and it has all the knobs for your gain levels here, right? And so the really cool thing about this is that when you, this little box here will show you your levels and it'll tell you when you're getting close to clipping out which is when it goes red and let me see if I can hold the phone and talk and clip this thing out so watch if I uh, let me turn down the volume here so it won't hurt your guys ears but if I turn the gain up too much on my snare watch what, no what, what happens to number two you see I would hit that red you don't want that when you're recording because then you you won't you won't be able to mix that out so i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to record in logic here so you guys can see what i'm talking about so let's go over here now we're on Hello? All right, so I'm going to hit the R button here. Okay. So we're recording. So also, if you ever want to, once you want to record, each track that you want to record has to have the R button. And if you want to hear it in real time while you're playing, you have to have the I button open. So if I have my gain turned up too high and I hit the, sh the you know and I s really smack the snare drum watch what happens so if you look at my wave file now it clipped out and it's not going to sound very good and watch what happens and if you're doing your own mixing it's going to be really hard to um, to deal with that snare sound it's going to clip out and it's going to distort and stuff so ideally you kind of want it to be a lot lower like in this range you want each the top and the bottom of the wavelength to be around here so I'm going to change it for you guys and you guys can see what I'm talking about so let's put the gain around, I'd say a little, I like uh, 11 o'clock. See what happens when I smack the snare. It's at a good level, right? So let's uh, let's try recording again. You can see that's a much better, much more workable uh, wavelength here. And we'll just play it so you can hear what it sounds like. So that is like literally 101 drum recording basics. Make sure your gain is cool, right? And make sure that your wavelengths aren't clipping out up here, okay? So, before I go any further, do you guys have any questions about that, or is it pretty, uh, pretty uh, cool? All
Yes? Maybe so? All right. Well, if there's no questions, I'm going to keep going, okay? So you've got your first two inputs here, right? Where you got your... Um, I got my kick and my snare of one and two because I figure those are the most important ones that I really want to always have in there. Simple, easy to get to. So if I want to get, for my in my case, I have eight inputs, right? I've got eight options, so that means I have eight mics. So I've got kick over here. That's one. I've got my snare top. That's two. I've got my snare bottom, which is three. I got my tom mic here. Oh, shit, sorry. <coughs> I got my uh, tom mic, high tom right here, number three. Low tom, four. Um, what did I do for five? I don't remember now. And I've got my overheads up here. And honestly, you can get by with just overheads and um, with just overheads and kick, honestly. Yeah, Connor, I like a, a question. I can um, I can tell you I'm not an expert on mixing, but I will tell you that for most of my um, for most of the videos I put online, I don't use that much compression except for maybe the kick or whatever. So I'm going to play for you guys now just kick and overhead. This is for people who don't really want to spend a ton of money on an eight input um, interface. And I can sh you can tell you how much better it sounds than an iPhone. So I'm going to play you guys an iPhone recording first. All right. Check it out. iPhone recording. like a lot of things were going in and out with the multiple instruments. The iPhone really couldn't handle all the instruments of the drums. Now I'm going to play you guys just a kick and with uh, a well-placed overhead just right in the center of the drums. So let me get this out of the way so you can see the wave files. Check it out. Yes, Jonathan, that's very true. You can make it sound good. I would use it um I would use it more as a room mic though, honestly, because it's always going to have a very heavily compressed sound, honestly, and it's not going to have nearly as clean of a sound. And it's yeah, if you want to use the iPhone, then just go for that. But if you want something cleaner where you could send Okay, so Put in an iPhone recording is not hard into audio. If you want to like link stuff, I think I did it. Let me see. You would basically take the iPhone video, right? Airdrop it to your computer. You would airdrop it to your computer, and then you would drag the video straight into Logic. So let me just pull up. My uh, let's change this real quick for you guys. Um, hold on. Hmm. 
you basically just drag the the file straight into into Logic, and it'll ask you if you want to pull up the whole movie or just extract the audio track. And you just extract the audio track, and that's the file you would get. So, oh, <laughs> thanks, John, Jonathan. Um, so I think um, I'm gonna ask you guys. So does everyone have the general idea of what's going on with the interface? Because I can move on to more, a little more complicated stuff. If you have, if you have it, uh, if you guys are pretty cool on that, I can go over. Let me just go over a few more basics before we get into EQ and why I use certain mics like that. Is that cool with you guys? So, again, if you're using an interface, you don't need a crazy eight pre like I have, which means eight preamps. You know. Say you do buy this, you can hook up eight mics, and you can get a full stereo sound and all that, and it'll be really cool. And you can get a really punchy kind of funk, awesome, dope sound. If you notice here, so when you have an APRI, you're going to notice all these plugs back here, and you see how they're numbered. Three, because my first two are in the front, so one, two, kick snare. I got my bottom snare, high tom, uh, mid tom. Oh, six is my talk mic, and then seven and eight are my overhead. So I'm only using seven mics. And then these two where it says monitor one and two, right here, that would be where you would plug in your speakers. And there's another thing I have here called ADAT, which for those of you who may already have like a Scarlett um, two preamp audio interface, you can literally buy a really cheap eight input preamp buy this little cheap ADAC cable and connect them and now you'll have an extra eight preamps to plug into so you'd have ten instead of two for like you know a quarter of the price so if you ha again the way you connect your pr your interface into the computer for me right now I, I have the Thunderbolt so this Thunderbolt cable is going into my Thunderbolt input but if you buy a USB one it would just be a USB going into the back straight into your computer and if it's a USB it might be powered by the computer but for in my case it's Thunderbolt so I have an extra um, thing I'm plugging in so I want to move on to uh, mic placement and what type of gear I use so for my kick again it's pretty wild you'd be pretty shocked at how um, don't really need super expensive mics like none of my mics cost over a hundred dollars so the one I have over here if you can see let me see if I can zoom in here that's a Shure PG 52 kick drum mic and I don't have a hole in the bass drum and I have it centered right in the middle of the drum to get as much bass as I can out of it because it's tuned pretty high and it's an 18 inch bass drum so I, I still want that jazzy sound but you know I want some thump so I have it right in the middle of the drum. And for my snare drum mic, I'm using the industry standard, the SM57. That's all you really need is SM57. Well, it's my roommate's because this is mine right here. Is I have it on the bottom of the snare. And you may be thinking like it's a little overkill, but man, having a bottom snare drum mic is like adding like it sounds like to me like you're adding like 50 claps to a snare drum sound. I want you guys to check that out actually. Hold on. You just get so much more crispiness. Let's go back to the Logic window capture here. All right. I'm going to play you guys the difference between a snare drum with the, the bottom and with it out. Sorry, doesn't sound bad, right? Now let's hear what it sounds like 
Now let's hear just the bottom, actually. You hear how much more crispiness the top end is being added when you have that in there? Now let's add the top. Take it away. So I really, uh, uh, Jonathan, for tips on the bottom snare, it's, um, I think you just want to avoid phase issues. You kind of just point it at the same point that the, um, that the top snare is. So let me switch back to my iPhone so you guys can see it. Thank you again, guys, for bearing with me. This is my first time doing a, a streaming thing. I hope it's working out for y'all. Okay, so here is how I have my bottom snare set up. And it's just, they're just generally pointing at the center of the snare drum. And with pretty much all, like, close miking, I really like to have the mics pointed directly at the top of the, uh, the middle, directly in the middle of the drum. You know, obviously out of the way, you don't want to hit it with your stick or whatever. And placement is really important also to avoid bleeding, especially like with your floor tom mic here. You'll notice I actually have it almost like under the cymbal because these, these, these close tom mics are usually, are usually in like professional, especially live situations, they're called dynamic mics, which means the dynamics are mics are only picking up sound that is directly in front of it and in a very streamlined, so like it's only picking up sound that is happening in this line, a streamlined thing. It's not picking up any sound that's happening behind it, only in front of it. So check it out. So I'm going to go back to screen here so you can see what I'm talking about. Watch when I snap in front of the, sn the snare drum mic. Now right behind it. You barely hear it, right? So when it comes to recording drums, that's extremely important because they're super loud and you're going to get cymbals everywhere. And so for my overheads, um, I want to talk about, you can use two different types of overheads. You can use either, you don't want to use dynamic mics because, again, they only pick up a very, very small, um, like, net of sound, right? Small area of sound. Con small condensers will pick up this whole left side of your drum set. Condenser mics will pick up a lot more. They'll get a lot more highs. they get a lot more details. And the reason I have my... Um, overhead set up like this one it's very easy to have small condensers on one mic stand so you're saving space two when you have it on like an X Y little like left and right um, stand like that you can avoid phase issues because what happens when you do your overheads if they aren't the same distance uh, apart from the snare drum they're going to cancel each other out and sound really weird. And so I'm sure a lot of you know this, but Led Zeppelin famously used to record their drums with just three mics. I think it's called the Glenn's John technique, where you set up two mics, two mic overheads, uh, directly the same amount of space from the snare and just a kick mic and maybe like a room mic. And that's how they got that big, awesome sound. Obviously... Most of it's from John Bonham's amazing drumming, but this was the technique they used. So I'm going to play you guys now a sound you can, the kind of sound of the drums you can get with just, just small condenser overheads and a kick mic. So three mics, you don't need a crazy preamp or anything like that. Um, you can get a four, four uh, preamp setup, and this is the sound you can get. So kick, snare, and overheads. Here we go.
I think that sounds pretty duh, pretty darn good, huh? Now let's listen to it with all the all the mics. We got the toms. Uh, we got a room mic, which I have. If you have a if you have uh, capabilities of eight preamps, I have this nice large condenser in the middle of the room that my roommate let me use. He's a dope engineer. You guys should check him out. Evan Feltz, dope musician, dope photographer as well. He's a renaissance man. So now I want to show you guys what it would sound like if you used large condenser microphones. So um, for this recording, I'm using large condenser microphones. And let me see if you guys can hear a difference. Let me just pull up, see if I can pull up a picture as well of this. Oh yeah, I can pull up another slide. Hold on. Second, guys. Mm. There you go. So, I use a pair of these, of these uh, SE Electronics large condenser microphones to um, use as overheads on my drums as well. And I use it for vocals. I use it, if I'm if someone asks me to do a recording, for instance, of just like brushes, I've done a couple of those now, where I've done a recordings of just brushes. So I will use um, one of these for brushes and then another one maybe for cymbal swells or something like that. And I want you guys to check out the difference between this, like a large diaphragm and a small diaphragm. Check it out. Uh, 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 uh. So, lastly, I want to cover, um, lastly, yeah, I agree, Tando. I, lastly, I want to cover, before I take any, like, direct questions, I want to cover, um, so you got your stems, right? Now, I want to show you guys how you can bounce this out to your friends or whoever wants the uh, recording to link up with their own thing. So. Let's say, let's say I want to bounce out, hmm. let's just take, is like really short, but I want it to go all the way, like some, some were overdubbed or they're not all lined up or whatever. What you can do is you take your marquee tool. Let's make sure I'm still on the, yeah. You take the marquee tool. You hold command. All right. I'm going to put the mic down for a second. And you just drag it all the way to wherever you want it to be. 
So hold on. So I want my stems to go all the way to the beginning so that the person who receives and the engineer can receive all my tracks lined up. So I have them all highlighted, right, using my marquee tool, which I had here. So now I go to edit, um, join. If it's only one region, you just which is one track, you just do one. But you might as well just always do regions per tracks. That way it'll give you separate it'll give you separated tracks going all the way back to the beginning so that it's gonna be easily lined up and quickly exported to your homie. Check it out. Say yes, create. Now we're lined up, see? So when I export these, they're gonna be in the position you want lined up with whatever your friends, whatever track you were playing along to, if you came in at a different time. Now the engineer doesn't have to worry about, oh, where am I gonna find where he was supposed to come in and like th and stuff like that. So once you have that, then you, uh, holding nothing, you click, drag over the track, right? So you now you want to get your tracks out individually. I want my kick track, I want my overhead track, right? I want these to send out individually so that the engineer can have as much um, wiggle room as he wants, right? Right click. I like to do export as audio files. Boom. You want to save it as a wave because that's the uh, highest quality you can get you choose wherever you feel like exporting it to your desktop logic I usually export it to my hard drive right but for now let's just do desktop that way we can just get to it really easy and I can right and then you just hit export Okay, so we run into Finder, and we type in, we go to the desktop, and boom, our waves are there. So let me delete these, because I have no space on my computer. Okay. So, um, do we have any questions? guys for me yep you can also do that Connor but uh, when you do that you can run into the danger of uh, bouncing all of them as one file rather than separate ones so if you were doing your own mix and like you said alright this is the way my drums are gonna sound mixed onto one file or stereo file then yes that's how you you would you would bounce it like that way but if you want to export them as separate stems so that someone can take later on and uh, export you need the you need to export them as audio files so are there any um, we've got about 17 minutes left on the stream here are there any questions you guys have for me
Yeah. Yeah, there is. Uh, I hope I'm I hope I'm understanding your question correctly. So say you got a really good EQ on your kick, right? I've done this before. You would go over to Okay, let's say I'm gonna go crazy with my EQ here. Right? And I'm gonna like do this and that and this, right? So I believe you can do it from here. Yep. So I can s I can save my EQ setting. That's one way. You see I already have one. And let's just add what's a popular one I've heard. Let's add some bit crusher. I don't know. Let's go crazy, right? So I've got these two plugins here. Right, I like that. So now I'm gonna double click setting, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Save channel strip setting as and boom, you just save it and make sure you know where it's saving to. I guess I have it on my yeah, I have it on my uh my computer's hard drive, but I think I'd rather have it on the external, but I'm not gonna save this. So you just name whatever you want. And then boom, hit save. I hope it's I'm saying boom a lot. That's a really good question though, because that can definitely come in handy when you're trying to send something out quick and you just want something that you know is gonna work. Hey Frank, yeah, it's definitely Okay, so Jared, I hope I hope that answered your question. And let's move on to Jonathan's question. I don't change the miking technique based on the drum tuning, except for the kick drum. So on the kick drum, if I'm doing like more like like pocket stuff that isn't so like acoustic and open and jazzy, I will take the bass drum mic. I will put it inside the hole of the bass drum, right? And I will point the front of the kick drum at where the bass drum beater is hitting the the batter head. And that'll give you a really kind of fat sound. Um Jared, I've never tried that before. Um j well yeah, Jonathan, that I hope that answers your questions. And Frank, um uh, I think it's way better to adjust on the hardware first. You want to get as many things um Opti you want to get your the most optimum amount of uh, stuff going on when you record into the interface rather than having to fix it later. So you're, you're, you're you really want to make sure that your uh, that your gain levels are right. Nothing's peaking or anything. So you're always better off going lower on the gain uh, and then lower on the gain going in when you're recording. And then afterwards, if it's too quiet, you can just you can just uh, turn it up, right? Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned this before, guys, um, but as far as the um, when you're using condenser mics, again, condenser mics are great. You can use condenser mics on all your drums, right? They're super detailed, and but the thing is, they have a little trouble handling like the power of drums so like when you hit your drum that sound it's, it's it, the sound of the drums coming out is a physical thing and some mics can't handle like the literal like physical pressure and air coming out of the the drum and sometimes can't handle it so condensers you would use more in recording aspect more as opposed to a live aspect but dynamic mics like the SM57 Audix i5 are a little are a little safer but as far as when you are using, I forgot to mention this, when you are using condenser mics, you have to make sure that this button is on. Let's see if my camera will clear up here. The 48V, that is sending power to your condenser mic, okay? And the condenser mic needs power from this preamp or your audio interface in order to work, okay? But you'll notice on my interface it has 48V and it says one through four here. That means it's gonna, it's gonna send po phantom power, 48V power, to inputs one, two, three, and four. 
So make sure you do not have a ribbon mic, which is like a darker kind of mic that will be sound really good for horns. Also sound really good on overheads if you want like a really dark, super jazzy sound. But you have to be careful to, n to not send phantom power to those ribbon mics. Otherwise, you can risk blowing out the ribbon in the mic. There's like a literal small ribbon in the mic, and you can risk, um, you know, messing up an expensive mic. So don't do that. All right? <laughs> yes, Jared, uh, I agree with you about the pads. And I think the pads are a better, they're more suited for live situations if you're using a, um, because I'm, wor I'm worried about using pads. And if you guys don't know what pads are, let me show you on, um, I've got a mic right here I can show you on. Hold on. Got my iPhone cam. I've got my SE XA X1A right here. So where it says negative 20 dB, that's your pad. You guys, you guys getting that? Hold on, sorry. Okay. Hmm. Can you guys see that? I'm sorry. You guys, can you guys see this mic? Okay, yeah. All right. So this negative 20 dB, that's going to take 20 decibels of uh, volume out of the mic to save you from feeding back and stuff like that. And then you'll notice here, that's going to cut a lot of low end off of the mic as well. So if you have this mic on a kick drum or a floor tom and you're in a live situation, you really don't want that feedback and you just want to protect yourself and give yourself some headroom, then you would use it. Me personally, I like to keep everything flat and then turn down the gain so that I have as much uh, as many options as possible post, but that's everyone's personal preference. Also, a really cool thing about this condenser microphone is that uh, if you notice this upside down heart um, Instagram butt shape here is that that means the thing I was talking about with the dynamic mics since this the label is on this side this mic is only going to pick up stuff that is coming to it from this side of the microphone so everything above it on this blank side it's not going to pick up it's not going to pick up any sound on this part of the microphone it's only going to pick this up so these are really really useful I believe these are called um cardioid condensers so like other condensers will have like an uh, infinity or eight shape and that means it's picking up everything around it or on the left and right side of it and then if you have one that's just a full circle that means it's picking up the top and the bottom okay so I would recommend for drum specific drum stuff and you don't want bleed pick up something that has this shape I'm almost positive it's a cardio, it's called a cardioid condenser, a hypercardioid condenser. And, uh, yeah, um, are there any other questions you guys have? Uh, maybe some EQ questions? And also, please, please, please feel free to, um, DM me if I didn't, if I didn't reach your questions today. Please DM me. I'm on my phone all the time during this pandemic. Come home all the time. And uh, I'm also just going to pin my com pin my uh, Venmo and PayPal in here. If you guys could uh, donate the suggested eight bucks, what are more or less, I would really appreciate it. Um, it cost, you know, it was kind of a lot of work for me to get these over here. And I'm going to have to most likely take an Uber to get them back. I'm just being real with you guys. But it was, uh, thank you, Jared. There you go, polar pattern. But it was, um, it was really fun doing this for you guys. But if you could donate to me, I would really appreciate it. So, for my Venmo, 
I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna put them in there for you guys, and I'll put my PayPal as well. Is there anything I didn't cover that you guys? Um, need uh, answered okay Jared yeah let's 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 go into the EQ uh, for these last five minutes so just a really quick, 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 quick uh, thing here. Especially if I'm mixing for jazz. Let me pull up a different... Um, I guess we can just... Let's stick with... This. this is the one I like the most. Small condensers. So. I'm just going to... I'm just going to play it in real time for you guys. And I'm just going to explain as I go along, okay? start with a kick. So I'm going to solo the kick. So, you notice how different that sounds there? So I don't like using presets. I'm going to put everything flat here. So for a jazz drum, for a bass drum in general, you want to take this off a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of this low end off. This is, again, very basic, basic, basic stuff. I don't really know what I'm doing. But basically in EQ, you want every drum to have their own little slot and spot, right? So I like to take off down here. And then I, you see where this, uh, that's where, like, the main note of the drum is coming, right? So I'll take a little, I'll just increase that a little bit. Take down the, the width of the, Spectrum. I like doing around 100k. Right? We take a little bit of this high end off because I don't want the symbols in there. See how the symbols are almost gone now. But you still have the essence of the bass drum, right? So you can do that according to how your ear sounds. And so for every track, we're going to be taking this low end out. Now we're on the snare. on the snare, I don't need all this low end, like at all. See, there's nothing happening here, but it's gonna, it's gonna interfere with the kick, so let's just take, let's just get it all the way up here. You hear the snare still doesn't sound any different. And you do the same thing on the high end side. Okay, not too much. You still want some of the, the top end. And now, you can just add here, or I kind of like to leave the, the snare alone, honestly. And then what I'll do is I'll pretty much copy and put the same thing on my snare bottom. Just paste it right there. Maybe a little bit more of the high. And then level it down a little bit on the snare. Right? Now let's hear how the snare and kick sound together. So for the kick, you don't have, you're not gonna have a lot of, um, not nearly as many notes. So what I like to do is put a little noise gate on it to get all that other extra stuff out of there. And noise gate is just what it, it cuts out all sound un until your bass drum hits it or whatever instrument hits it. That way you're getting rid of all this unnecessary stuff. So check it out.
So that's going to get rid of a lot of clutter. And it's, I want a little bit more ring in my, in my bass drum, so I'm just going to let it hold out a little bit longer. So we can do the same process for the toms. And that's basically what I do. I just try to make a little spot in the EQ for all the... So I'm taking the cymbals out here. And you'll notice the wavelength. It's pretty strong. You can see where I'm hitting the tom. So let's just pull this over so it's just... Okay, so let's put a little gate on it if we have, if we want. Boom, right? Just a little bit more. So it's just, just the tom. All right, so I want it to be longer. I want to hear the whole note. And this isn't really necessary. You can also just, what I do, if I, if I don't have too much tom stuff going on, I'll just edit out the tom. So a really quick way to do that, you see the wavelength. You come right up on it. Hit Command-T. and take Take all that out. Man T. Make sure you line everything up. Again, Command T. I click on this. Delete. Same thing here. Click on this. Command T. Delete. Now I don't have any of that mess. Is this uh? Oh, you couldn't see the EQ. Ah, sorry guys. Oh wow, that's weird. Okay. All right, I think it, let me see here. I'm going to try to pull the plugins up for you guys, okay? Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm still trying to figure this thing out here. Uh. Alright. Well, hey, guys. I'm really sorry about the plug-in thing. Um. Oh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Good idea, Connor. Um, we can also set up another Zoom meeting um, next week, and I can do a highly reduced uh, Zoom meeting price of the of the uh, plugins here. So let's play it again so you guys see what I'm talking about. I'm going to switch to my phone. I thought I was switching my phone.
see here. Yeah, guys, the phone's not going to work. My, my cable's bugging out. Okay, so can you see this? This is how I have my pretty much all my drums. I cut out the low end. And I do the same to the kick here. The kick is probably the most important one. So you see how I have a little bit of the low end taken out. You don't need all this. You know, especially like your upright bass is going to be covering this or. I don't lose that much uh, power in the kick. I have that. Does wonders for the rest of the mix. So the snare here. See how much I have it over? So let's, let's take this off. You hear how much the kick came out when I took that off? Just want to give every instrument their own. Was that better, guys? Yeah, so, um, Connor, for as far as the uh, getting an acoustic sound, you want to you wanna use, you want to, um, you don't want to use the toms a lot. You want to really, wa if, you're, if you're looking for an acoustic sound, you want to focus all your attention on the overheads, I would say. Right? And beef up the level on the overhead. So let's just experiment here. Because I'm, again, I am not a master of uh, acoustic recording or anything. I just know the sound I like. You know, and I've just, I've just, I'm going along at this the same rate as you guys. So why don't we do this? Let's just pull everything down. And see what kind of, and let's just start with the overheads. If I was doing the jazz thing strictly, I would start with the overheads. So let's play the track and let's just start with overheads because that's the sound you're looking for. Okay, that's nice and open. You're getting in the room. That already sounds good, right? Now let's pull up the right side as well. And so this is my left and my right overhead. Will really help clear stuff up too. So, let's pan this. If you're looking for a more modern acoustic sound, you're going to pan everything to different spots. So, the left overhead is going to go over here. Equal amount on the other 
the side. So this is for a more modern approach to acoustic music. Now we're going to work on my kick. But we're going to, not, not too much, just enough. I think the best way to do it is have all the drums on equal reverb, right? Um, and how you would do that is you would go to edit, I believe. No. Okay, create new auxiliary channel strip, okay? So now that's going to give us an area to send all the drums. And we take, we go to the input section. And we put it on bus uh, one. Sorry, Alex. Get out of here. Okay. Now, you go over to kick or whatever. I would say let's just put it on all the all the all the tracks, right? And now we're gonna send. See where it says send. We're gonna send that. I'm gonna send them. Oh no. Just no. I'll do a quick. We send it all to bus one. Right now, it'll show you. This is like a little level for how much of that track you want. Let's just for now. A lot of times, I like to just put it all the way up and then adjust over here. So now, let's add some reverb. I like Space Designer. All right. So right now, it's on large and bright. For these, I usually use a preset. And then I just adjust through the um, through the wet, basically. So now we're gonna turn up the reverb. So now you have this knob that's gonna, that's gonna control all the reverb for you.
Sorry, I froze, guys. I'm having trouble with the uh, 